Mimosa on stage now. Right here. Okay. On stage for her last oh, performance. Chai, do your thing and get up to the backstage area. Gotta love cartoonish corporate murder. You're gonna have to hustle. <laughs> it's one of my favorite types of corporate murder. Good old Chai sneak attack. Yeah, because it's less grisly. Not I love that it. shot. <laughs> <laughs> Sliding into frame. <laughs> we'll take her down. Together. These comic panels remind me of uh, Marvel artist Tetsuya something or other. Um, did a lot of really good stuff like Runaways. Interesting. Anyway, we gotta hustle. We weren't able to stop the intruders in the museum. I am not putting my performance at risk. Mimosa's angry faces are so unflattering because you can obviously see the wrinkles come in. They, they clearly make it where it's like, despite all of her attempts to beauty herself up, she is clearly like a, like a middle-aged woman. Mm. Like, that feels so much like the intent and how, like, absolutely rotten of a woman she is. Very heavily leaning into the vanity side of things. Oh, yeah. And also just the bit of, like, apparently this uh, this whole concert, this whole live performance had a children's choir. And, it's, <laughs> and, and we just and have her literally going, fuck them kids. <laughs> Put them in the DJ tent next to the orbital. <laughs> wow. The ego on her. Oh, yeah. There's, um... Like, like obviously she... Uh, it's a shame she doesn't have a sick uh, uh, of a dick, or else she'd be like impressing everyone with ha with her self suck abilities. <laughs> now everyone duck because I'm about to turn left. Ugh. All right, anything that we can get, yeah, we'll get that that second health tank. Yeah, the completed health tanks, the tiny picture looks more like a noodle pot. Yeah. Ooh, left shark. I'm glad you got that. <laughs> well, I figured it was either that or Blahage, and she doesn't strike me as the type to be into toy sharks from Ikea. Mm. Yay! No. Yep. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> yeah! Oh, please tell me that's an unlockable costume. <laughs> You have clued into this game's ways. You made it backstage, Chai. Who are you? I'm on my way to the stage, dressed as a shark. All sharked up and ready to go. <laughs> I love that he even gets like his own custom portrait to represent he's in the in, in the left shark suit. Besides which, this is Chai. When has subtlety ever been an option? It's like, uh, I know it doesn't happen because I obviously played this game. I know how it goes, but I will say as much. I really do wish that, like, when you reached Mimosa, I wanted the situation akin to, like, the Wicker Man remake where Nicolas Cage is in that bear suit and punches out that girl. I wish, <laughs> Just I wish running in with the clothesline. <laughs> yeah, that would have been perfect. Again, going into this completely blind. I am really hoping there is a dancing game with you as left shark. <laughs> mm. Well, that... I mean, like, it's it's still going to be a boss fight uh, in the traditional sense, but there's still plenty of things in it that are going to make it very distinctly Mimosa's boss fight. Because, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, it's not just her. She's got her entire, like, backup line of bitch bots. <laughs> her self-esteem team. Yeah, the Pados, which sounds, uh, which I mean, obviously sounds close to something way wrong, but I mean, you've yeah. seen, like, in the close captioning. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, we got a backing <laughs> band. Oh, yeah, 808, staying in the same Glorious shark moment. <laughs> oh. Give us your Spectra password. Oh, man, he de-sharked too early. Yeah. 
Again, should have closed Linder. Stop stop making this about I'm you, Queen bitch. Queen, and this is my show. Assistance! And you are there. Got a backing band just in like Majima's debut in Yakuza Zero. <laughs> Get me one with a beat! Oh yeah. Okay, and, with she... a, and with it being a boss fight again, we got a license track. A cover technically. <laughs> if you if you if you're familiar with Fiona Apple. <laughs> so, with this being the first traditional boss in a long while, this is a massive step up in difficulty compared to oh, even yeah. Rekka. And that's just for trying to no damage this. Because the stun gauge is now formally in effect with her, as opposed to Rekka, where you saw how I handled that with Peppermint's mm. assist and jam combos, where you could just very easily stun lock. Just overwhelm her to get the stun gauge up, get some high damage combos, and you could just immediately delete this first phase. <laughs> because she's got so much bullshit to deal with, because she can fly, which your air combo potential is obviously very limited, because it's like, you don't get anything in the way of like, you know, what... Dante or Bayonetta usually have where there's like some fancy air movement tech that you can tap into that doesn't yeah. really exist with Chai which is like a definite I would definitely call like a downside of this combat even though the rest of the simplicity of it I am more than fine with because again we've established recontextualizing familiar concepts with rhythm game elements is what Hi-Fi Rush is about yeah but with here it's like you want to shut her down when she's in the air as much as possible, but you also have to be ready to, like, parry her attacks at a moment's notice, because she started the fight straight up with, like, those, those, like, eighth notes, uh, symbols, that you, you gotta pay attention, both visually and in terms of audio, when they are going to fire in sequence so you can parry it, because those have been the things that ruined my no damage attempts. So, it's not a dance mini game with a shark, but we get a rhythm face off. <laughs> uh, okay, it wasn't too far off. Yeah. Now, now it's like the... uh, get to do, man. Oh yeah. With like that, like this was the sort of thing where like they knew they had to make this once they got to like this particular bridge in the song. And the meter is maxed out, and it's like, we could probably fail one, uh, one or two of these, and we'd still be fine, we'd still, like, beat her. I have obviously no idea what it would be like if it failed all these segments, and, like, <laughs> if it would actually transition into the final phase or not, or if it would, like, boot you back to the beginning. Probably the latter. Again, you people at home, you could do that on your own. I'm not sullying this no damage run. <laughs> Kick, punch, chop the attention whore. No one takes my and lives to tell about it. Like seriously, look at these robots and like the and like the fake haircuts they have. <laughs> so, one of them even has the fucking old school Leo hair. Yeah, the the curtains. Mm -hmm. the, the the defining haircut of Leon S. Kennedy. Yep. So this is another parry attack that you absolutely want to get because the benefit of doing it is that it instantly fills her stun gauge, which opens her up for these combos. Like, that that's what you want to get, and that's the sort of thing where you want to especially remember this for, like, the remaining boss fights as we get near the end of the game. Because this game is very good, ultimately, of, like, introducing its concepts and building on them. Granted, I do still wish that they could have fit in, like, other traditional boss fights in between Rekka and Mimosa, considering, you know, it's, like, seven whole tracks in between. Or, like, uh, or rather, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's technically, like, six whole ones hmm. in between tracks two and nine. I mean, they they have the, um, the QA1 million um, boss fight. I'm genuinely yeah. surprised they didn't have more like that. Yeah, but I guess, th I, I feel like that might have been, well, yeah, I guess it's the sort of thing where, like, there might have been a temptation to try and reuse that exact same type of fight, but that probably would have diminished, like, how special that one felt. Well, it looked like that was what they were going to do with the chaser, yeah. Yeah, but that would have been, 
I imagine on top of being cut for obvious budget reasons, there were probably difficulties they came up with in trying to make that an interesting fight. Because with it being on the tram as opposed to a circular arena, that kind of limits its movement options compared to yeah. what QA 1 million had. It, it would need to be a very specific type of fight, and let's be honest, this game loves its spectacles. Yeah. And also, what uh, like what track would you have used for that? Because they didn't have one. Yeah. Like, what licensed song would fit? Give me five minutes, I could probably come up with something. Yeah. Anyway, goodbye, bitch. <laughs> now that's a launcher. There you go. S rank. This fight is very hard to do well because it's like because th with with these different phases i did still have to restart them and you might have noticed that this is the case on multi-phase bosses like when you reload the checkpoint it resets your style meter back to c which is like the default start everything mm ready -hmm. and you would think that that would be like a problem with trying to like get the s rank for score but it generally isn't. I feel like it gets very close Turn to being like that if you play it on Rhythm Master. Mm -hmm. It definitely got to a point where it was like... I think I think I actually did hit a point where I did the Rhythm Master the difficulty down. version of the Mimosa fight and I got an A for Which score. Section, and I was All like... <laughs> See if okay. that reminds you of anything. <laughs> okay, Gary Oldman. <laughs> yep. Actually, uh, Gary Newman's song would probably work well for the chaser. I'm surrounded by idiots. Okay, yeah. Well, Maybe throw in uh, My Name is Ruin for one of the big boss fights. <laughs> I prioritize shielding the tower. So now it's these two that are left. <laughs> we'll get him. What we got the big boss and his dragon. You don't want to upset me, Kale. Why not? I want to see just how angry you can get if those punks make it in here. If it comes to that, I'll take care of it. Yeah. Now, do do not ang uh, do not anger the, the man who views Scrooge McDuck as his role model. <laughs> yeah. By the sounds of him, he think he, he views Scrooge McDuck as a pussy. But not coffee, Rogue. For not coffee, you always need coffee. Yeah. Yeah. He's like Garen Zabi, like lo looking back at Hitler and being like, "I could do that, dude, better." <laughs> he. The, the real problem with Hitler was he didn't try hard enough. It's probably something that he would say. He didn't have access to space colonies. That was his first mistake. <laughs> he could have dropped that shit on Russia and the tide of the war would have been different. <laughs> and left thank goodness history proceeded the way it was supposed to. <laughs> left, left a bit. No, the, ah, god damn it, that's Australia. Damn it! Again! <laughs> Wait, again? <laughs> Third it, if I had a penny for every time um, the Zabbies dropped a colony on someone, I'd have two, which isn't much, but it's weird that it's happened more than once. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... Campus is shut down. I, I did love that exchange, and just how... And, and just how Kale was being frustrated, like... I, again, say what you actually mean. Don't say and expect people to interpret your feeling of, what, of like what your intent is. <laughs> he's, if you he's don't the want the cafe to be shut down, say, don't shut the cafe down. He's the kind of person that would say, won't someone rid me of this troublesome QA operative? And they'd be like, okay, we'll just escort them out of the building. And it's like, no, I wanted them dead. Yeah. Also, that so, bit about Corsica still being on the email list... Yeah, I I still get emails from a job I quit like six years ago. That yep, too real, too real. <laughs> and we got so many. Somehow missed hmm. a like this actually scared me for a moment before I realized. Oh wait, that one that was missed. Post like game. it's place. Yeah, it's meant for to be the uh, to be in the post game. Which, uh, like, once I remember that was the case, I was like, okay, false alarm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn it, I'm gonna have to do the game all over again. I already fucked up missing that graffiti in track four. <laughs> I can't live with this. Nope, nothing for it. Gonna have to decapitate myself. I left home. Wanted to do things my own way. Yeah. But looking back... Probably the the struggle, like the mistakes that come from trying to be a self-made person. 
When it's like, no, sometimes if you have a safety net, you should have it on hand whenever you need. I tinkered with it a bit, but it's still pretty much how she designed it. Sounds like Project Armstrong. Technically, it was. I know that after she realized yeah. what technology... Of course, Kale is a thief. <laughs> started up a unit Takes all the credit for other people's work. Prototypes. And Kale is just rewriting that history. But 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 more than that at the moment, from from that discussion once we got back to the hideout, there was the very worrying line from Chai that you might have noticed. He has a plan. Yeah. And he's gonna and he is getting everyone hype for what his plan is. If I had time, I'd curate a montage of your plans that have gone terribly. Terribly amazing. Don't worry about it, Peppermint. If I felt like it, I could do that work for you. I'm the one in charge of the video editing. And here it is. Going according to plan. That actually no. wasn't the transition. Say you are improvising when you do stuff like that. That's you can imagine it in your head. It's plan. fine. <laughs> plan, plan. That's the ultimate plan. Chai, that's not a plan. You know, I, I'm really hoping that someone out there saw the movie Push because I'm getting strong vibes about the plan in that one. Oh no! Oh no! Dare <laughs> I ask? I dare I ask what the plan was in that because I've not watched Push. Um, spoilers, um, if you haven't seen a, what, 15-year-old Chris Evans movie? But they yeah, come up fine. with a plan, um, and then they get a psychic to erase all memory of the plan from them, because the enemy has psychics, and then have to follow a series of instructions to the letter from a bunch of envelopes that each of them is handed. So they have a plan, and then they start working through the plan without actually knowing what the plan is. Is that with you in these jokes there? I shit you not, terrible. you literally just described the plot of Strangers of Paradise. <laughs> I was shocked, like, mouth agape when you were describing that, and I'm like, that is literally what Jack and his crew fucking go through. I I think I only got about four chapters into that. I really should go back oh, to man. that. Yeah, unfortunately, I did ultimately, like, spoil, like, major parts of, like, what goes on later on in the story, but I think that should, like, encourage you to at least look up the rest of what goes on in there, because I think that's actually, I think what it is ends up being, like, a, like, a pretty interesting reinterpretation of elements from Final Fantasy 1, yeah. considering that the whole point of, like, what the what the marketing for that game ultimately lean, leaned into, where the main character is literally Jack Garland. Yeah, well, it was, we, you know, everyone called that it was going to be Garland the second the, the game, um, yeah. the, you know, the trailers were shown. And to their credit, Square wisely decided to lean into it, going, okay, you know the outcome, but you don't know the story. Which is really the only way they could do it. Mm -hmm. And it turns out the the outcome was it was all part of a plan that Jack didn't even know was the plan because he was too busy being what everyone else is when they play an action game. Fuck the plot. Let me fight stuff. <laughs> yeah, that that is not too far away from uh, the, the the final plan in push. Yeah, that's that's actually fucking amazing. I'm impressed. <laughs> also, surprisingly good movie. Um, kind hmm. kind of cheesy in places, but I was shocked at how good it was. Creating things that are good. It's not a science. It cannot be calculated. Roxanne understood that. She knew things took time and made sure we had what we needed. But Rogfa, <laughs> it was all about the contribution. Oh yeah, he's he's that guy who's like, okay, I'm only doing 22% of the project, and the rest of you chuckle fucks need to do exactly the rest. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's one of those. Ah. <sighs> All right, Cinnamon. I hope to God that you have some sense in you to not be excited for Chai's plan, despite your artificially positive demeanor. Your showdown with Mimosa was much more work. You can say that again. We put on a good show. A Project Armstrong Festival for the Ages. It's probably going to be the only one, so yes. Remembering the good times? Yeah. Of course not. I live in the moment. Eh, just find any of the people that were in the crowd. I'm sure they already had their phones with them. They were recording the whole thing. It, that, that shit's gonna get uploaded on YouTube in minutes. You can watch oh, yeah. it there, Cinnamon. Regardless, it was clearly a private matter she held close. 
It was not my business to tell. Some understandable restraint yep. on uh, Cinnamon's part, which shows that, okay, he is partly qualified to serve as a psych robot. He understands the importance of client <laughs> confidentiality. But bear in mind, I will hold things over you. So do mm. not open your mouth around me. Okay? okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, even more gears. Wow. Yeah. I was not kidding. Where, for knowledge of this game and, like, meeting all of the major goals at the earliest opportunity, we'll have you flush with cash. And you don't have that much more to purchase, do you? Not really. It's like... I think with the with a lot of the money I got, like, I don't do it, but if I wanted to at this point, I probably could have gotten most of the rest of the uh, like special attacks that were in yeah. the that were in the shop. Barring assuming that there are any more that like get added in after the fact, I forget. But 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 that's also me confused with the fact that like I know there's uh, like a couple extra ones that get added as part of like some of the post game post launch content. Yeah, I, which I kind of figured will be there, much there later. Kind of figured there would be some, um, like, more chips that unlock attacks that you pick up as well. Yeah. Yeah, just, uh... Yeah, just still scrolling through the, like, admire all the check marks I've got so far. Especially <laughs> on the chapter-specific ones. Yeah. Look, the ones that are at the very bottom that have, like, the really huge numbers to meet is the sort of thing where, like, it seems like a grind, but when you realize that, like, the game ultimately wants you to, in the post-game, complete all of the all of the stages on all difficulties with S-Ranks, you realize if going for that, you're more than likely to get, like, the human metronome achievement without, uh, like, having to do too much work, like, yeah. on the side. It, it is very much... Just, just play the game and you'll get it. Truest definition of, like, a long-term goal. Yeah. So that's it. We got two evil executives left, and we are all dreading uh, it just what the fuck Chai is going to hit us with. I fully expect to say the words that's barely even a concept at some point. Uh, I, I feel confident that there's going to be an oh fuck off coming from you when you see it. Just one? Well, at the minimum.